I want to talk about sound that's a little more complex than the sound we dealt with in the previous tutorial on basic sound waves. Those basic sound waves were electronically generated sound waves created by audition. They were tones, and those tones, sound waves, had a very smooth look to them, a sine wave look, and they did not sound at all natural. They just sounded electronic, and they don't sound like anything we would hear in nature or just hear in speech or with instruments. And there's a reason for that, and I'm going to explain that in this tutorial. Now, this is just a demonstration again, but if you want to follow along, feel free. You can go to File, Open. Go to the Working Folders, Multi-Track Sessions subfolder, and then double-click on 0202 Complex Sound. That'll open up a bunch of files in the Multi-Track Session. We're not going to work in the Multi-Track Session, but that's just an easy way to get a bunch of files to show up here in the Files panel. So I want to start off by taking a look at my voice, the Gettysburg Address thing that I've done. I'll increase the volume on a little bit. Now, right off the bat, you should say to yourself, whoa, this is much more complicated or complex looking than the a440 sound wave that I saw in the previous tutorial, and that's true. Let me just zoom in on it a bit so you get a chance to see the waves more closely. And look, at they're all over the place. Now, my comfort zone when I speak is about a C below middle C. That's a C in the middle of the bass clef. And middle C is about 260 cycles per second, so the C below middle C is about 130 cycles per second. So you'd expect to see a nice, smooth 130 cycle per second wave here, but obviously that's not the case. And the reason that it's not happening that way with just my one note of a C as I speak, not only does my pitch change a little bit, but because there are harmonics. Now let me show you what harmonics look like. I'll zoom out a bit so you can see them. Here is my voice in what's called the spectral frequency display. And this displays frequency or pitch, starting at a low pitch at the bottom and going to a high pitch up toward the top here. And the brighter the yellow is versus the darker purple, that's the louder volume. And so my typical pitch would be around a 130 down here, around C. And you can see there's all that 130 stuff, although it varies a little bit because my pitch varies as I speak. You know, I go up and down a little bit as I speak, like right here, for example. Conceived in liberty. Conceived in liberty, going up and down like that. But you see these other guys above it. So what's going on here? These are overtones, also referred to as harmonics. When our vocal cords bang together back and forth, they vibrate as we speak. They're not vibrating as just like two flat, straight lines just going crashing against each other, vibrating as like one unit. They're a membrane. They're flexible. And what's going on is that inside the lines of the vocal cords are these little sub-vibrations going on, these little smaller vibrations that are going along the length of the vocal cords. The smaller vibrations, because they are smaller, vibrate faster than the vocal cords as a whole. So they have these higher frequency vibrations that go above the pitch that we're speaking. Those are called harmonics or overtones. And the overtones make your voice richer. They give it the color or timbre, as it's called, T-I-M-B-R-E, timbre. And that is what makes things sound more natural. So if you watch this again, we'll watch it go along here. Four score and seven years ago. You see my pitch goes up and down a little bit, but all those overtones make it sound like a voice instead of something electronic. So let's move on to something else I'll show you. We'll sort of step through harmonics here through some instruments, starting with a really simple instrument, the vibraphone. The vibraphone is metal bars sitting on little pins. And so the metal bar, how much flexibility does the metal bar have? But in fact, there is an overtone. This is the A440 down here, but the overtone of that metal bar is two octaves above A440. There's a 440. One octave above is 880, and you can see a slight line there for the 880. So there is an overtone at one octave. And at two octaves, at 1760, there is the main overtone for a vibraphone. Now, not all vibraphones necessarily have a two octave overtone, but that's not unusual. And so, in this way, the vibraphone does not sound electronic. It has a little more richness, but not much. You know, it's just kind of like one or two steps away from being an electronic tone. Let's step up to a little more complex instrument, a piano. Now, a piano, if you think about a piano or a guitar string, and if you look at a guitar string or a piano string vibrating in slow motion, there'll be the one big swing for whatever pitch that is being played there. But inside the string will be these little harmonics, these little sort of sub-vibrations, just like the vocal cords. So here's A440, but look at the overtones for that. Now 
You'll notice as you go up higher, there are fewer overtones. And that's why I think people view higher pitched notes as being maybe a little less resonant, a little more shrilly, if you want to call it that way. And besides, since I sing bass, I'm kind of prone to like the resonance of a bass voice. This is a bass note down here. Here's A440. This is the A below middle C, and this is the A two octaves below middle C, toward the bottom of the bass clef. So the bass note has lots of harmonics to it. 110 is two octaves below A440. 220 is an octave above that. Here's 440, an octave above that. So here's one extra note in the midst of these things. And you think to yourself, why am I not hearing a whole bunch of chords here? You'd think all these overtones would make a chord, but in fact, they just make the note richer. And one of the cool things about barbershop quartets is if those four guys or gals hit their notes just right, the way barbershop harmony is written in certain places, their voices will create a harmonic that's so distinct and so pure, you'd swear there's a fifth person singing with them, creating a note that's higher than any of them could actually create. It's really remarkable if you've got a really good barbershop quartet singing right in tune. They will have these harmonics, these notes sort of rising above them, and that you could swear there's a fifth person there making this harmonic if they do sing their harmonies just right. Let's move on to an organ, which is even richer. Look at the bass here. Right, all those harmonics. Those pipes give the opportunity for all sorts of places to get extra vibrations to make the note even richer. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the waveform. If I take a look at the high end, the treble end there, versus the low end. It'll be kind of interesting to see how that looks. So switch over the waveform view. This is the high end there. Let's zoom in on that a bit. Zoom in much more. Now look how relatively simple that is. We'll go to the end and take a look at the bass. So let's look at how much more complex that is. The bass end with all those extra harmonics create a much more complex looking waveform. Let's go back to a voice. This will be our singer. Just too hard to find. Uh, I can show you her pitches in the spectral frequency view again. It's just too hard to find. That's an E, D, C, A, C, middle C. And her middle C right there around 260. She's right on the money in terms of the pitch. And you can see her vibrato, especially in the last note. That's just not unusual for a vocalist to throw some vibrato at the end of a phrase. We'll listen to that again. Just too hard to find how rich your voice is, how resonant it is, all those overtones, just to give you a sense of how complex our voices and our instruments can be, and particularly how complex voices are uh, versus, let's say, a piano or something like that. So I hope that gives you a sense of the complexity of sound and how overtones or harmonics create that complexity.